Hi everybody, Jeff here from Room to Discover. And today I wanna to tell you about my number one favorite math lesson ever. This lesson is called The Sieve of Eratosthenes. And in this short video, I'm going to tell you why it's my favorite lesson. We'll go over who Eratosthenes was, what the sieve did, how you could teach it in your classroom, and finally, where to go if you wanna get lesson plans and resources to help you use this with your own students in a classroom or in an online learning setting. So first, why is it my favorite lesson? Well, the main reason is just because it's so much fun. Students love to do it. I love to teach it. I can do it again and again and never get tired of it. Uh, the second reason this is my favorite lesson is because it works for so many different things. You can use it with students of all different ages. You can use it to support so many different concepts. For one, the sieve is a great way to reinforce base 10 understanding. It's also a wonderful tool to help students understand and become more fluent in the four basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it's also great for helping them work with prime numbers and to understand factors and multiples. And when students are done with the lesson, they have a reference that they can use uh, to help them in the future to, to support fluency, to, to support mental math. And it's a, a reference guide that's much better than using a calculator or a, uh, a multiplication chart because those, the more they use them, the less fluent they get. With the sieve, they're actually doing enough thinking when they use it as a reference that they're becoming more fluent. They're, um, they're remembering those times tables. They're getting more automaticity with basic math facts. And the final reason why this is my favorite lesson is because it's not only a lesson for math concepts and procedures, but it also has its own little miniature math history lesson built in. So for the who, who was Eratosthenes? Well, he was a mathematician in ancient Greece. And at the time, mathematicians were obsessed with prime numbers. Well, the funny thing is that some things never change because even today, mathematicians are obsessed with prime numbers. We have supercomputers trying to find the biggest prime number that's ever been discovered. And prime numbers are really important for things like encryption. So anytime you make a purchase online, enter your credit card number, prime numbers are a critical component in making the code so that somebody else can't interpret your credit card number along the way and, and buy stuff with your card. So prime numbers are still really important. And while today we have supercomputers to find the biggest ones, back in ancient Greece, it was really tricky to find prime numbers. People would just have a number and say, oh, maybe this number's prime, and then try a bunch of, uh, try to find factors of it. And if they could only find two, right, if prime number only has two factors, itself and one, if they can only find two, they said, okay, this is prime. But they were, they were doing it in a haphazard way, and so it took really long. What Eratosthenes did was he came along and developed a system. That's what the sieve does. Now, a sieve is really um, a device that lets some things pass through and others don't pass through. Like when you strain your spaghetti after you cook it, uh, that's a sieve. It lets the water pass through and not the spaghetti. So you have spaghetti and no water. And there are all kinds of sieves in mathematics. The sieve of Eratosthenes um, basically lets non-prime numbers pass right through so that what we're left with are prime numbers. So let's take a look at how the sieve works using a hundredths chart. And this will also help you see how you might use this in your classroom with your students. Okay, so this is what our sieve looks like. It's basically a hundreds chart, and then at the bottom, we have a key. So what we're going to do first is we put a big red X in one. Why? Well, the sieve is about finding prime numbers, and one is a special number because it's a whole number, and it's neither prime nor composite. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna color in two blue, in my key, and I'm gonna do a big blue circle inside my two. Then I'm gonna start putting a little x in every multiple of two, four, six, eight, 10. And I'm gonna continue my way all the way down the page. Let's go on to our next uh, multiple, which is three. I'll choose orange. And again, put a nice uh, big orange circle in my three, and then start putting little orange x's on all my multiples, six, nine, 12, 15, and then working my way down the page. 
So what we have here is this multiplication patterns organizer. So again, I skipped the fours, fives, and sixes. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out how to do that and you know how to guide your students through that once you see the first few. Um, but here, the next part is this notice and wonder organizer. So when we do this, um, I might do the first couple as a whole group and then have students work in pairs, small groups, even independently. And with each number, each multiple that they do, we're going to start looking for some patterns, right? So in the twos, they might notice that they go down in columns, that every other column is filled in. There's, there's a lot of X's and there might be some that your students find that aren't on this list. It's not comprehensive. And then what do we wonder? Why do the X's go down? Do other numbers go down in columns? And then for our threes, they go down diagonally down and left. Some multiples of three are also multiples of two. They might wonder why they go diagonally. Are all the multiples of three odd? This is one that a lot of students think it's a multiple of three, it's odd. But when we start filling this chart in, we, we see those things. So if you'd like a free copy of this simple hundreds chart, uh, you can go to roomtodiscover.com slash TPT. That's our Teachers Pay Teachers page. And that's up there as our free download, the simple hundreds chart. Um, but if you're interested in the complete lesson, okay, that's going to include uh, some background in history on Eratosthenes and what the Civ is. It's a complete uh, three-part workshop lesson plan that you can use with your own students. Also has the hundreds chart, of course, plus a key for the hundreds chart. It has the multiplication patterns organizer that goes all the way up through nine and a key that has notice filled in notice and wonder for multiples through nine. And finally, a rubric that you can use to help your students understand what good group work looks like, uh, what they should share out um, at the end of the lesson. Now, uh, what about online learning? If you're not in a physical classroom, can you do this lesson remotely? And the answer is yes, emphatically. Um, so here's three ideas. These are not the only three, but uh, a nice low tech way. You can have students just print the hundreds chart. You can make your own video. You can do a live chat to show them how it works um, and they can just complete it on paper. Uh, maybe they don't have printers. If you have um, a Google domain, that's super convenient. There's a great tool that I'm going to show you in a second uh, called Kami that um, allows students to write directly onto a PDF from their computer. What some people um, don't know is that Google Classroom also allows students to write directly onto a PDF, but only on the app, um, which kind of makes sense because usually if you're using something like a tablet or a phone where you have the app, that's where you have the touch screen. I'm just going to show you quickly um, how um, how Kami works. So here you see I have the Civ of Eratosthenes open. I made a separate copy, Civ of Eratosthenes Kami copy. Basically the same things that I would have done here. I can just click on the red and then write my red X. I can say, okay, I'm going to do this for blue and then say two is a blue circle. Um, make my little X's, but uh, this is really cool, easy tool. All you do, you come up here and save. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you go to, again, roomtodiscover.com slash TPT, that's going to take us to um, our Teachers Pay Teachers store. And as you can see, our free download is the Civ of Eratosthenes worksheet. And um, one of our featured items here is the Civ of Eratosthenes complete lesson. Uh, for more on how to use lessons like this with Google Classroom and with Kami, check our YouTube channel. We have other videos that'll really show you how you can use um, any type of PDF lesson in a remote setting using Kami or Google Classroom. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to Room to Discover. Now, if you'd like to find the resources that will keep your students engaged in a live classroom setting or for online learning, visit roomtodiscover.com slash TPT. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.